it is now the beginning of prediction season. This is the time of year when all the experts start telling you what's going to go on with interest rates and real estate next year. Spoiler alert, I am not an expert, <laughs> but I am happy to share what I'm seeing in this market and what I'm reading that some of the experts say is, is going to happen. I can start with this one right here. This is from Business Insider. Home buyers are waiting for the Fed to start cutting interest rates. Here's what 10 experts say is going to happen. It gets interesting. Um, one of the, They kind of go on in the beginning here and talk about the past and everything. So let me get down to Preston Caldwell. Morningstar senior U.S. economist wrote in a note that he expected the Fed to start cutting interest rates in February. The Fed will pivot to monetary easing as inflation falls back to its 2% target and need to shore up economic growth becomes a top concern, he wrote. So that's one guy. He said February they're going to cut rates because inflation is going to be closer to that 2% mark. Write that one down. By March of next year, says this new UBS economist, that's uh, Aren Cap. I can't even try to pronounce that name. Federal Reserve is going to cut interest rates beginning next March. One of the key features of UBS's forecast is very pronounced Fed easing cycle seen unfolding from March 2024 onwards, they wrote. They added that the Fed cuts would be a response to the forecast of a U.S. recession in Q2 and Q3 of next year. Hmm. Here's one. David Einhorn, founder and president of a hedge fund, says, nope, not before April. You're not going to see any cuts then. Wait, we have one here that says May. Following the release of August inflation report, KPMG's U.S.'s chief economist, Diane Swank, wrote in a note that the Federal Reserve might not be done interest raising interest rates. Now, I do agree with her when she says this. The Fed needs to see quarters, not months, of fundamentally cooler inflation to cut rates. We're not even close, she wrote. Our forecast for the first rate cut, May 2024, holds. Here's one. Between April and June, it just keeps rolling out, doesn't it? Reuters pulled 97 economists, so they're saying, well, won't see cuts till late spring, early summer. And second quarter 2024, Goldman Sachs says... And so the best guess is that we'll get back to 2%, he said, regarding inflation. But by no means are we, definitive, are we definitively there or even close enough. So too soon to say that we've beaten this problem. Between May and end of 2024, another one says the end of 2024, later next year. So you can see there's no consensus. The old saying, you can line all the economists up in a room and still not come to a Agreement? Well, that's what we're looking at right here. Now, here's an interesting one. This is a Fed tool here that tracks what everybody thinks, target rate probabilities. So right here saying for December, 98.9% feel uh, that we're going to stay right where we're at is what they're saying here. Um, we go over to January and 96.8% here say Current target rate is 525 to 550. Um, you get out here to June, and the numbers drop tremendously. So not a lot of people think there's going to be any rate hikes going further out into the year. Now, what's it mean for us? Well, locally, folks, here in Arizona, the you know, Cromford Market Index has always been a pretty good indicator of future moves. Um, it always gets a little harder to tell when you see little moves like like this, and little moves like this downward in the index, gets pretty easy when you see these straight lines right here. When interest rates went from 3 to 7, these drops were profound. So we're kind of ticking down a little bit, which tells you that December and January are going to feel some pricing pressure. We're not feeling much, and this is spurred mostly because of our demand here in Arizona is down. But it's not falling off the map like it did again back here. It is going down, but not falling like a rock. Mostly because we don't have too much farther down to go, right? We're already touching the floor here. So um, our supply issue is still 
not brisk. It's trying to come up, but it's doing ever so slowly. And in November and December, I don't expect any surprises in supply. And I also don't expect a huge spike in supply as we get rolling forward into the, uh, into the new year. Now, what's my guess and my prognostication after reading all of those predictions? I don't see a rate cut coming in March. And the reason I don't, and it's just me, I'm no economist, but I'm looking at the tea leaves and I'm seeing how much federal spending went on in Q3 of this year. Takes about a year for that to start bubbling through the system. Right now, our inflation is at 3.2%. It's probably going to go down a little bit. Everybody's going to be encouraged in December. They're going to be encouraged in January. But as this money starts to circulate through the economy, I'm expecting a surprising number. Not an alarming number, but I'm expecting enough of an increase in the rate of inflation to knock everybody back on their heels. That's just me, and I think I'm going to see that about March, April, or May when those numbers come out. So I'm not cheering and saying, here come the rate cuts, here come the rate cuts. I don't know. And I don't. also, I don't think big rate cuts for housing is that healthy for housing right now. I don't want to see it reignited and get crazy again. I want to see us kind of stay here for a while so that people can make slow, smart buying and selling decisions. And that's my personal opinion. Where do I think it's going to be next year? I don't know. I'm just going to watch it. And I'm going to share it with you here. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick, rickhelps.com.